Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless palm scanners to appear in every whole foods store this year pretty wild take a look can you think about a, an area or a world where all you would need to pay for your groceries is your hand amazon is expanding its palm recognition technology to all whole food locations customers can pay for items just by holding their hand over a reader the technology recognizes your unique palm signature which is linked to your payment card Critics have raised concerns about a company storing biometric data. If you don't have your wallet, there's no problem. Just scan your palm to pay. Amazon One is a payment system that has been tested at several stores around the Bay Area, and now it may be coming to a grocery store near you. Just shut your palm real quick. We may scan it. I hope you don't use that. <laughs> the idea of using your palm to pay doesn't feel right for this Whole Foods customer, but others like the idea. I don't know who else can get into my palm, really, but... I'm not really against it. The technology coming to the Bay Area Whole Foods stores over the next few weeks works like this. Amazon says no two palms are alike. They use vision technology. You hold your hand above the device. With scans, it takes less than a minute to create a palm signature. Your palm is connected to your credit card online, so whenever you want to pay, all you have to do is hover your palm. Too intense. It's a little crazy. This customer is worried about privacy. I think using your DNA and stuff is just too much to give out. What does this trend toward an electronic and cashless society have to do with Bible prophecy in the end times? Scripture reveals that the Antichrist will unite the world under one religion, one government, and one united economy. Every person will be required to take a mark in order to buy or sell goods of any kind, but it has even more sinister potential. It is a perfect weapon in the arsenal of a tyrant bent on world domination. As we know from the Bible, a tyrannical ruler will govern the entire world during the last half of the tribulation period, and he will likely use technology to accomplish his purposes as we read in Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, his number is 666. Technological advances are paving the way for fulfillment of end time prophecy. These innovations are creating the environment that the Antichrist and false prophet will need to wire this world together for their evil purposes. Even now, it is well within the range of possibility for a centralized power to gain worldwide control of all banking and purchasing. With tribulation era prophecy taking shape all around us, if you have never called on the name of the Lord, I implore you to do so today, as we can anticipate the Lord's return is not far off. So um, how concerned are you that in the wake of whatever the next economic disruption that we're going to face is, and everyone kind of feels like maybe there's something coming, um, that will wind up with digital currency issued by the central bank? The Fed has been talking about this. Oh, yeah. And what the Fed said was, well, you know, we wouldn't do it without consulting the legislative and executive branches. Ideally, we would get a law passed. No, 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 no. That's not how the Constitution says it's only ideal that you get a law passed. You would have to get a law passed. I don't think Congress would pass that. So I think the Fed may try to do something unilaterally. For those who don't know what CBDC is, what they want to do, and this is tied in with like Davos, World Economic Forum, all these people. They want the Fed, they want to get rid of cash, they want no cryptocurrency, and they want this to be the sole form of legal tender. And they have said this publicly at like Davos and these other places. It will allow them to prohibit, quote, undesirable purchases like fuel and ammunition. And so the minute you give them the power to do this, they are going to impose a social credit system on this country. CBDC is a massive threat to American liberty. Make no mistake about it. Central bank digital currency is not a monetary system. It is a social credit system in which the governments of the world 
will tell you how you can spend your money. We can see that Christians will be persecuted using this system as they will try and force believers in Jesus Christ to adhere to their evil ways. When Christians say no, they will turn off your CBDC account. I hope you see how the mark of the beast comes into play as Christians will not be able to buy or sell. The Bible gives us the most dire warning to those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image in Revelation 14, 9 through 11. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. The first of God's bold judgments is aimed specifically at those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image, as we read in Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sword came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. World Health Organization sparks concerns about power grab through global pandemic treaty in 2024. The attempted power grab described by Bachman involves the World Health Organization, or WHO. Through a series of 307 amendments and a global pandemic treaty, the WHO seeks to gain authority over health decisions of UN member nations that could affect the rest of the world in the case of something like another COVID pandemic. Then they would be empowered to tell us in America, we have to lock down, we have to shut down, we have to close our churches, we have to close our schools. We're forced, mandated to take a vaccine whether we want to or not. We're forced to mask, we're forced to whatever it is that they tell us that we have to do. We have never before in history, and. 5,000 years of recorded human history. We've never seen this level of authority given to an international global body. Those supporting this authority for the WHO, such as top advisor Dr. Abdullah Asiri, say it's necessary to protect the world's population, even if it means restricting some of their liberties. The world, however, requires a different level of legal mandates, such as the pandemic treaty to navigate through a particular pandemic, should one occur, and it will. Prioritizing actions that may restrict individual liberties, mandating and sharing of information, knowledge and resources, and pandemic control efforts are all necessary during a pandemic. Let us seize this opportunity to foster international collaboration, ensure global health security, and protect the lives and the well-being of all people beyond boundaries. Bachman sees little to no opposition from nation's top leaders in handing over this power starting next year. I don't think all the nations fully understand what these implications are, so we have very little time. And top backers of this United Nations move do say speed is of the essence. And I wish to stress from our perspective, the quicker we can come together, the sooner we will all be safe. We know that the challenges we face won't be solved by a few leaders or a few countries, but by the world coming together and fighting for what's right. Some in Congress oppose this move to further empower the WHO. They've proposed legislation that would deem it a treaty. A treaty would require Senate approval. Bachman, however, claims the White House is trying an end run around these lawmakers. The Biden administration doesn't plan to bring this treaty back to the U.S. Senate because they're using a subterfuge. They're calling it not a treaty, they're calling it an accord. And they're saying, this isn't a treaty, this is just an accord, we can do this, we don't need the involvement of the U.S. government. But once you give government and power away, it's very hard to get it back. The former congresswoman points out the Bible warns world-dominating power will bring trouble. When you look at what the Bible says and the convergence of events that we are seeing across the world right now and what the prophets from the Bible have said, we need to really pay attention to what's going on because this is the creation of a platform for global government. And according to the Bible, uh, things that, that are not good come out of a global government. The Antichrist will control a one world government as we read in Revelation 13:7. It was granted to him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation, which is the world. 
We can plainly see the stage is being set for the Antichrist to take his place on the world stage. What will be the trigger that enables the Antichrist to become the leader of the one world government forcing all people to take his mark and to be worshipped as God? Stay tuned as we watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Tonight, North Korea firing yet another barrage of cruise missiles, according to South Korea's military, the second launch in a week. North Korea is very upset at this time because the USS Kentucky, a nuclear ballistic missile submarine, is parked in Busan, a harbor in southeastern South Korea. That event has not occurred in 40 years. The reason for that event is to demonstrate to North Korea, who keeps waving nuclear weapons in our face, that we are a nuclear power, and we want to send that message loud and clear to them, because we want strategic deterrence here, certainly, and, and Kim Jong-un, though threatening yeah. to use nuclear weapons, we want to make sure he never even thinks about doing something like that. Tensions building in the Middle East right now, and word that the U.S. is sending Marines and a lot more warships to that area. A lot of this has to do with the growing tensions, specifically with Iran. In just the last week alone, the U.S. has deployed the guided missile destroyer USS Thomas Hudner, along with two squadrons of F-35 and F-16 fighter jets, a strong message of deterrence intended for Iran and Russia. The department is increasing our presence and ability to monitor the strait and surrounding waters. We call upon her Iran to immediately cease the, these destabilizing actions that threaten the free flow of commerce through this strategic waterway of which the world depends on for more than one-fifth of the world's oil supply. The Pentagon announced Thursday it is also sending an additional 2,500 Marines as part of the Amphibious Readiness Group Marine Expeditionary Unit. They will be based in the Gulf, also available to protect any U.S. embassies as tensions flare in Baghdad and elsewhere. Protests outside the Swedish embassies in Iraq and Iran following rumors of a Quran burning led to the Swedish embassy in Baghdad being torched by an angry mob. In the Strait of Hormuz, during the past two years, Iranian forces have attacked, seized, or attempted to seize nearly 20 internationally flagged merchant vessels in the Sinkham area of operations. Most recently, on July 5th, the USS McCall, McFall, a guided missile destroyer, intervened to save a Marshall Islands and Bahamian oil tanker carrying oil for Chevron as the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy tried to seize the oil tankers in the Gulf of Oman. U.S. A-10 Warthog warplanes then began patrolling rolling in the skies over the Strait of Hormuz to deter Iranian aggression. Just last week, Neil, a senior U.S. military official, told us he worries if the U.S. takes its eye off the Middle East in its rush to deploy assets to the Pacific, that bad actors will try to take advantage. This latest deployment of American forces is to send a loud message of deterrence. The war in Ukraine and Russia's new naval threat, Moscow now sending a warning about Black Sea ships heading for Ukrainian ports. Tensions in the Black Black Sea are escalating with the Russian Navy staging live fire drills in a deliberate show of force. That comes nearly a week after that attack on the bridge that links Russia to occupied Crimea, and that triggered a standoff over grain shipments. Russia pulled out of the deal that allows grain to be shipped around the world, and Moscow has spent much of this last week targeting agricultural sites along Ukraine's Black Sea coast, multiple missiles striking Odessa and Mykolaiv. Ukraine claims that more than 120 tonnes of food was destroyed on Thursday night alone. After Russia said it would target any ship heading to a Ukrainian port, authorities here in Kyiv said they would do the same for Russia controlled ports and the turmoil facing Black Sea trade routes has started to push up food prices already. This region is a major exporter of wheat, corn, oil and fertilizer and so this threatens to hit global commodities markets. State border crossing prohibited reads the sign separating Poland and Belarus. Poland is a member of NATO 
Belarus is closely allied with Russia, but has kept its troops out of the war in Ukraine so far. But thousands of Wagner mercenaries, now based in that country, are training Belarusian troops. Those exercises are taking place right on the Polish border. Poland responded by deploying more than a thousand troops east. These are hardened war criminals, so of course any Polish government would be uh, concerned. And uh, the first duty of any government is to protect its external border, international border, and the people on our side. Here on the Polish border with Belarus, people are concerned the war games going on just kilometers away could mean something worse for their country. Those rising tensions, this between China and Taiwan, Beijing with a show of force ahead of Taiwan's annual military exercises. ABC's Britt Klenet joins us now from South Korea with the latest. Taiwan plans to hold those military drills next week. They're essentially a, a rehearsal in case China did invade the self-ruled island. And China is sending a clear message. Dozens of Chinese fighter jets and bombers flying toward Taiwan, crossing the midpoint of the Taiwan Strait. Now, that's the unofficial buffer zone between them. China sending 37 planes in 24 hours, which really marks a jump from the fairly regular incursions we have seen. But this kind of aggression, it's really something China does to show its anger over political moves, such as hosting U.S. officials and even fired missiles over the island during former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit last year. In this case, however, China is clearly riled up by Taiwan holding these drills over the coming days. The White House will likely be watching China China's moves very closely. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention. His return is near. Turning now to the conflict in Sudan, there are reports that airstrikes have killed at least seven civilians in the capital, Khartoum. There are also suggestions that the aid group, Doctors Without Borders, could pull out of the country after one of its aid convoys was attacked. Well, let's go straight to our correspondent, Hiba Morgan, who's on the ground there in Khartoum. Hey, but are we seeing another intensification here in the fighting? Well, because of the lack of a ceasefire agreed upon by both sides, the paramilitary rapid support forces and the Sudanese army, fighting very much continues here in the capital, Khartoum. Now, the resistance committees of the southern belt, the southern part of the capital, reported that several civilians were killed as a result of airstrikes launched by the Sudanese army against positions of the paramilitary rapid support forces in the southern part of the capital. Uh, several people were also injured, along with properties destroyed. And they say that those who they were able to save and who survived the airstrikes were taken to hospitals uh, for treatment. But fighting does continue. Just a short while ago, we were able to hear gunfire uh, in parts of Umdurman. Uh, we can regularly hear the artillery. And as I'm talking to you, Anastasia, we can hear the Antonov plane belonging to the Sudanese army mm -hmm. flying overhead. So that shows that uh, four months into the conflict, the fighting does continue with no signs of it abating. Luke 21:25, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Tonight, outrage across India. As distressing video appearing to show the brutal treatment of two women catapults a bitter ethnic feud into the national spotlight. These screenshots taken from a cell phone video showing two women paraded naked through the streets in the Manipur region of India by people police describe as unknown armed miscreants. Out of respect for the women, we are not showing that video in full, but it was allegedly taken in May, moments before they were sexually assaulted. One of the victims told the Associated Press, quote, they forced us to remove our clothes and said we will be killed if we do not do as told. They abused us. They touched us everywhere. The violence depicted 
emblematic of the near civil war in a region that has seen villages rampaged and homes torched to the ground by mobs. More than 130 people have been killed and tens of thousands displaced since May. A bloody battle between the Kuki people, a tribal group that lives in the hills, and the Métis, the majority group that recently demanded special tribal status, which would allow them to buy land in those hills and strengthen their influence in government. Militias on both sides taking up arms to defend what they believe is their homeland. The women in the video belong to the Kukizo community and were attacked by a mob of Meiti men, according to the Indigenous Tribal Leaders Forum. Today, they are said to be safe in a refugee camp. The video is so shocking and seen so widely, it forced Prime Minister Modi to break his months of silence on the tribal feud. He's vowed that the guilty will not be spared. Manipur's chief minister says police have made an arrest in the case. But it wasn't enough for some. According to state officials, some have tried to take justice into their own hands, setting fire to the house of the main suspect in the case. With more than 60,000 people displaced in Manipur so far. We are not safe here. They attack anywhere, anytime. Locals on both sides of this violence are trying to rebuild and remember those already lost. An opposition stronghold. Clashes broke out between police and demonstrators in the Kabira slum on Thursday. Police responded with tear gas and live rounds. It's not the fault of the youth that are on the streets. It's the frustrations of life. We don't have any employment, that's why we are finding ourselves in this situation. When you see the youth in the streets, it's because they don't have any jobs. Opposition leader Rainer Odinga had called for three days of anti-government demonstrations. But on Thursday, the protests did not spill over into other neighbourhoods in the capital, though several were killed and over 300 people arrested the day before. Odinga first mounted his campaign against the Kenyan government in March, spurring his supporters to take to the streets over Kenya's cost of living crisis and over what he says is a stolen election. Since the start of the demonstrations, at least 20 protesters have been killed and Amnesty International has decried an excessive use of force. Government uprisings are now a daily occurrence in our world. People in just about every nation are protesting, rioting and demanding their governments do a better job taking care of the people. A man, I believe, who is alive and well today, will soon come on the world scene, seeming to have all the answers, and he will bring a false peace to the nations of the world. Three and a half years after this man comes on the world scene, his true intentions will become known. He will bring war the likes of this planet has never seen. And with war will come famine, pestilence, and death. The Bible refers to him as the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. What do we know about the Antichrist? The Antichrist has many names. The King of Fierce Countenance, the Prince who is to come, the Beast, the Son of Perdition, the Worthless Shepherd, the Man of Sin, the Lawless One. The first sealed judgment in the book of Revelation is the releasing of the Antichrist upon the earth. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. The Antichrist will be evil, yet appear as a savior. He will be outspoken and have great speaking ability. He will have a fierce countenance. The Antichrist will be extremely proud. He will not desire women. He will be a military genius. The Antichrist will be mortally wounded. He will be indwelt by Satan. He will come from a revived Roman Empire. The Antichrist will control a one-world government. He will control a one-world religion. He will control a one-world monetary system, known as the Mark of the Beast. It is evident that planet Earth is in the time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. The world is seeing death, destruction, and despair at unprecedented levels. The events the world is suffering through right now, awful as they are, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, there will be a time of severe distress this world has never seen or ever will see again, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as it has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. This time of distress Jesus is referring to is called the seven-year tribulation, in which the inhabitants of planet Earth 
who have rejected God and remain unrepentant in their sin will face his wrath. These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep, God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.